We're proud to be GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Good evening. I'm live from Scampton in Lincolnshire. I'm right next door to the former RAF base. There had been a business plan to do something really exciting with that piece of land, but now it would appear that the Home Office wanted to become a migrant detention centre. I'm going to be debating and asking tonight the question, can Scampton be saved? Because I think the Home of the Dam Busters raid should be saved for future generations, and I feel it very strongly indeed. Before all of that, let's get the news with Polly Middlehurst. Nigel, thank you, and good evening to you. The top story tonight on GB News. The DUP in Northern Ireland says it's going to vote against the government in this week's first parliamentary vote on the new Brexit deal. The Prime Minister agreed the new Windsor framework with the EU last month, aiming to resolve some of the concerns unionists have had about the Northern Ireland Protocol. Also in the news today, the Home Secretary has told MPs she is satisfied the provisions of the government's illegal migration bill are capable of being applied compatibly with the Human Rights Convention. That comes after Suella Braverman said migrants could be sent to Rwanda by as early as this summer. The agreement between the two countries has been expanded now to include all illegal migrants and not just asylum seekers. Speaking in the House of Commons today, Suella Braverman told MPs the UK is now going to work with France more to secure cross-channel cooperation and she criticised Labour for announcing their immigration policy on Twitter. Shadow Home Secretary's been on Twitter. She's very good on Twitter. She tweeted in the last 10 days Labour's paltry excuse for a plan. Half of it's stuff we're already doing. The other half is their plan for open borders and unlimited migration. What I suggest they do is get off Twitter, get to Rwanda and I'll show them how to stop the boats. Strike News and members of the RMT union in Network Rail have voted to accept an offer covering pay, jobs and conditions. Staff will receive a pay rise of between 9.2% and 14.4%, as well as increased back pay. The union says its 20,000 members voted 76% in favour of the new deal. And in the United States, local, state and federal security agencies are preparing for the possible arrest of the former president, Donald Trump. Security fences are currently being erected around the Manhattan Criminal Court, we're told, as a precautionary measure. The district attorney has presented evidence to a New York grand jury related to allegations that a Trump associate is said to have paid $130,000 in hush money to the porn actress Stormy Daniels during the final days of the 2016 presidential campaign. And lastly, the former rugby league player Bryn Hargreaves' body has been found more than a year after he vanished in the United States. That's according to his family. The 37-year-old former Wigan player moved to the United States about 10 years ago and was reported missing in January 2022 after he didn't show up for work. The cause of death is not yet known. You're up to date on TV online and DAB Plus Radio, plus the TuneIn app on radio. You're with GB News, the People's Channel. Time for Farage. Good evening from Scampton in Lincolnshire. Well, as anyone that watches this show or listens to this on the radio knows, I've been campaigning for the last three years, saying that the flood of young men that crossed the English Channel was beginning to put intolerable pressures on our communities. What we know is that over 450 hotels have been filled up with these young men all over the country. And so part of the government's new plan, along with its ambitious scheme for Rwanda, along with hoping the European Court of Human Rights allow us to deport people who I don't think should have come here in the first place. Part of the new plan was to have migrant detention centres in former military bases. That, the government believed, would be far less controversial. Until we learnt just a few days ago that this would affect RAF Scampton. Now, Scampton, for those that don't know, 
it was opened up by the Royal Flying Corps in 1916, but in World War II, this became the home. And in fact, 80 years ago this week, Guy Gibson established 617 Squadron, an elite squadron that on the night of the 16th and 17th of May 1943, launched the raid on the dams, Operation Chastised. Of course, in our immortal memory, mostly because, to be fair, of the Dam Busters film and the theme music, it is very, very much a rich part of our cultural history. Worth noting that 617 after that went on under Leonard Cheshire later in the years to do some very remarkable things. But all of this was flown out of RAF Scampton. And even in the post-war world, Scampton was a very, very important place. Vulcan bombers flew from here, including one that went down and bombed the runway at Port Stanley in the Falklands War of 1982. And of course, this has been for many, many years the home of the Red Arrows. But as all of you know, we're running down the size of our armed forces, and that has meant that in 2022, Scampton stopped being an RAF base. There had been, I think, a very good local plan to keep the runway open, to build hotels, to have a heritage centre remembering those incredible deeds that those men did back in the 1940s, and indeed that men and women have done ever since, and to have a big tech park built around it. A plan that said maybe up to £300 million of investment could come into an area, an area that needs levelling up. But to find out that the Home Office actually want this to become a migrant detention centre, they've advertised for jobs already, that they're quite happy to kick it in touch with the business plan, I think this is dreadful for this local community and, frankly, an act of cultural desecration. I do not believe this should be allowed to happen. I've put my name to a petition. Over 20,000 people have. And this is cross-party, because actually the petition has been put forward by somebody who intends to stand for the Labour Party at the next election. So there is no party politics in this whatsoever. This is about jobs and money for a local community in rural Lincolnshire, and it's about preserving our historical and cultural heritage for generations to come. So my question, my debate tonight with my guests is, can Scampton be saved? Now, earlier on today, Christina Curtis, one of our producers, went out into the village of Scampton to ask local people for their reactions. A bit of a shock to everybody, actually. I think people were looking forward to a lot of investment in a, what is now an empty area and there are a lot of people bought houses in the area and people were looking forward to new development and new money coming into the area and then to have suddenly hear that we're one of three possibilities for asylum seekers has I think scared quite a lot of people. Um, obviously these people have to go to a place and they have to be looked after until uh, where, they're, where they're going to end up can be found for them. But at the same time, there's a lot of heritage at Scampton and I think it has to be thought about very carefully whether this is the right place for them with that possible new investment into the area in an area that really does need a lot of new development and a lot of new investment. I spent 10 years of my Air Force career up there and a good part of it on 617. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with it up there. So 617 and the, the Lancasters, at, nominally based at Stampton, would be sort of farmed out to satellite airfields. But Gibson's um, office, his dog's graves up there. There are two wartime listed aircraft hangars up there. Um, hell of a lot. Many people in the local area have a personal connection to the airfield, including Tom whose whole family relocated to the village because of his love for RAF Scampton. How much of a shame would it be if they didn't turn it into a museum or, or somewhere for people to go and visit? Um, a lot. A lot. I will be very hungry in the that. I think it's very hard to put yourself into the shoes of the asylum seekers. Obviously, they're fleeing. They're their own countries for, for a reason which obviously we've never been put in and, and obviously as much as you feel for them um, you, you know for what they're going through and, and things like that I think so, somewhere like RAF Scampton which has got loads of history um, which is very close to where people live and obviously people live on the base still and things like that um, personally I can't see how it's possible and, and how it can work um, but you, you know just straight after announcing 
um, pumping in what was it 300 million of investment um, and then obviously to announce that which then obviously the the investment company have then straight away pulled out of I just I, I can't understand uh, the council's thinking So can Scampton be saved? Give me your views, Farage at gbnews.uk. I believe it absolutely must be. Now, at half past seven, in a few minutes' time, up the road at Polypat Primary School, there was going to be a parish council meeting. A couple of hundred of local village residents are expected to attend. There is deep concern about these proposals within the community. Well, one man who joins me before that meeting is Councillor Roger Patterson, Conservative councillor for Scampton, and you are, of course... West Lindsay District Council, which is the relevant authority. Yeah. You're the deputy. And, Roger, from what you told me earlier, uh, Scampton, this has been an ambition of yours for years to do something when the RAF left. The first time I got involved was 2008, where we said the base was closed and we fought to keep the base open, and then, obviously, we couldn't. Um, so it was all about getting a deal. We saw what the MOD did to other communities around here. There's three of them, and they completely ripped the heart out of the communities. Um, and we were determined not to get that way. And then so when the council said they were going to do something about it and they invited bidders and people like Scampton Holdings come along, um, I just knew that we were going to get a good deal. What I didn't realise is the amazing deal that we got with Scampton Holdings. Yeah. The, the, the thousand jobs, the investment, the, the... And you were on the verge, as I understand it, you as the local council were on the verge of this all being signed up. As far as I know, um, it, it was just basically dot the I's and cross the T's um, from the MOD and obviously with Scampton Holdings. Um, and just out the blue, um, I heard on Monday night that Scampton Holdings had got the deal and it was just euphoric. It was the best deal we've ever had. Mm. Um, I, I just couldn't believe it. And then suddenly, out of the blue... I got told by a journalist yeah. about Scampton. Yeah, and we learned that, we learned that jobs are being advertised yeah. to work in the migrant detention centre. We learned that artefacts, even Guy Gibson's office, has been packed into a box and sent back to RAF Hendon. I mean, at the moment, it looks like they intend to do this, doesn't it? I've always been an optimist, and I've always believed from day one that we would get a deal. I didn't realise how good we would, but I've always been an optimist, and I'm an optimist now. I have worked at Scampton. Mm. I do know what the um, accommodation and the blocks are like. They're not fit for purpose. And the, these people have got complex needs, and they deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and housed properly in secure, in decent accommodation. You haven't got that at Scampton. There's no decent accommodation. They can't cope with 1,500 scouts, let alone immigrants. Um, it's just not the place. We haven't got the infrastructure, the transport, the doctors, the education. We haven't got any of it here. It's the wrong place at the wrong time, and it's a choice now between the right thing, which secures a thousand, um, thousand jobs or more, and gives us a uh, But there is jobs. also, Roger, there is also the historical side of this. I mean, I mean this oh, yeah. site is of huge importance in our national psyche, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was in the army and I love military history. I mean, you're surrounded by it in here. Um, and it's so important that we keep the memory of these people alive. We, we tell their story for future generations. Um, and of course, this deal will do that and more. But if they rip that away, the story dies. Nobody tells anything. No, which I, 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 I think would be awful. We've obviously been out and, and you know, spoken to some local uh, residents. Today, uh, how, would you, how would you sum up local reaction to the proposed migrant detention centre? I think people were devastated more than anything, more than anger. I think they're devastated because we, you know, Monday night was absolutely brilliant. We had this deal. People saw a bright future. Mm. They know what the other future is. They've seen it around Lincolnshire, where the MOD have just ripped the hearts out of people's communities. And Monday night, we weren't that. We were the ones that yeah. have got the best thing. And all of a sudden, Tuesday, we could have our hearts ripped out and we could be left with absolutely well, nothing. And this Monday, Roger, you're off to Polypat Primary School. Right yeah. now, hot foot, you're going to be 200. I think quite concerned people. Yes, and we're just going to tell them what we know um, because we don't know a lot, but we know we're going to tell them about the deal, we're going to tell them what we know and listen to their views and fight. And we're going to fight and we're going to win. Can Scampton be saved? Yes.
There we are, a bit of positivity there from West Lindsay District Council and the representative for Scampton. In a moment, when I come back, I hope to be talking to Sir Edward Lee, who is the local Conservative MP for this constituency of Gainsborough. He's just been speaking in the House of Commons. He's on his way to a microphone as I speak. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prison? I, I don't believe in prison. So I'm please. completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess I've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Co. You're uh, an inspiration to us all. Click that bit up. Well, you are. You, my, you, you, no. <laughs> my political ambitions are those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing. Go on. He's probably going to want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes to have one. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like Absolutely. on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubery, weekday evenings at 6 o'clock. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yeah, that's right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers <laughs> tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. So your reactions to this flooding in, and someone said to me earlier, well, Nigel, why are you here? This is a local issue. No, this is a national issue. The boats crisis has come to Lincolnshire in a big, big way. Some of your responses to the question of can Scampton be saved? One viewer says immigrants shouldn't be put in detention centres or hotels. They should be deported without exceptions. Shame on the Conservative Party for not stopping the boat crossings. Well, they've been warned and warned and warned and they've gone down and down in the polls. Suella in the last 48 hours has started to sound more optimistic and later on in this show we'll have a clip of an exclusive interview GB News did with her in Rwanda yesterday. Joe says it's a disgrace if it must be turned into housing it should be for our veterans and our own needs not economic migrants. One viewer says a stain on the memory of people who fought, who fought for the country. Uh, I, I promise you that Gary Lineker, you know, who thinks all of this is absolutely fine and dandy, I promise you Gary Lineker represents, in a recent poll, about 16% of the country. There is a very clear majority. Not happy with the whole situation. And I think once this story of Scampton gets out and becomes bigger, I believe 
that there is a genuine prospect this can be stopped. And interestingly, over the last 48 hours, a letter has been sent to Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, from a list, list of very distinguished public figures and historians, particularly military historians. So what's the big plan? What's the big regeneration all about? Is it real? Well, Scampton Holdings Limited was set up in 2018 when the RAF announced that they would be pulling out in 2022. And Peter Hewitt is the chairman of Scampton Holdings and honorary group captain of 601 Squadron. So, Peter Hewitt, is this all a pipe dream or does Scampton Holdings actually have a plan? There, there is a real plan and uh, it's, a, it's a very exciting plan. Uh, it's about heritage, but it's more than just heritage. It's about regeneration, it's about jobs, it's about space, it's about science, it's about education. All of these things that are so important and we have a number of, um, we, we think we will be creating well over a thousand jobs. There is an immediate uh, need for, uh, there will be about 250 jobs that we'll be creating um, in next year if the plans go through. So earlier this morning I was talking to um, the minister and he was very receptive. He, that's, that's Mr. Jenrick, is it? That's Mr. The Jenrick. immigration minister, yeah. So he was, I think he, there were a few points he didn't, hadn't realised. And mm. one of the things is, from Scampton Holdings' point of view, this is absolutely binary. We cannot have the immigrant centre there and our plans to carry on. In particular, a continuing active runway. Absolutely. So if you imagine sort of 1,500 people loosely contained, but not contained, uh, you can't have the Red Arrows be doing low-flying uh, there, and you cannot have an operational airfield. We would just never get permission for it from the CAA. Have you got the money? Yes. Yes, we have some wealthy backers. Right. So, as I understand it, you were very, very close. NDAs had been signed. You were very, yep. very close yep. to this deal with West Lindsay District Council actually being signed, sealed, delivered and announced. And sort of, you know, right at the 11th hour, uh, we hear of this alternative plan. Do you, do you think perhaps it was a lack of knowledge, a lack of publicity about what you were doing that's caused the problem? Um, can't help thinking it's a left hand and a right hand issue because on the one hand we've got the Chancellor talking last week in the budget about levelling up and as been mentioned Scampton and Lincolnshire are a very important part of that levelling up and our sort of £300 million regeneration plan over 10 years or so uh, is, is a core part of that and yet on the other hand there's the, the Home Office are talking about immigration and they're talking about uh, 1,500 um, migrants here and that will be in Will, it will completely scupper our plans yeah. to, for regeneration. And, of course, RAF Scampton, when we think about it, I mean, it represents, of course, courage, it represents sacrifice, but it also represents ingenuity and technology. I mean, what 617 were formed to do was exactly. to use this incredibly revolutionary new bouncing bomb, as it was called, that had been developed by Barnes-Wallace later on night. And, in a sense, part of your plans... I've written to be a high-tech way of looking to the future. Oh, totally about, totally about the future, about entrepreneurship, about... And exciting, satellites in particular. Uh, yeah, definitely sort of dual-use type satellites. So one of the first things that will happen will probably... The, the drone port will come into play using one of the existing buildings. So satellite applications catapult, one of the, the government quangos, are hugely supportive and are very, very keen to get on site. So that would be one of our, our first projects. Well, I have to say, Peter Hewitt, you know, my job um, as a presenter on an Ofcom regulated channel is to provide balance. I'm not even going to try to. I wish you every luck with what you're trying to do, and I really do mean that. Thank you, Nigel. Now, we have got Sir Edward Lee joining me down the line live from Westminster. Uh, Sir Edward, uh, you've had a pretty busy day, I think, meetings with the Minister, speeches in the House of Commons. Uh, I've just been talking to Peter Hewitt about the plans and the fact West Lindsay Council was so enthusiastic. Um, how on earth did we get to a situation where the Home Office seemed to want to override all of this? Well, I've just been uh, speaking in the chamber, which was why it was a bit later, Nigel, coming on with you. And I asked a question today. And as you heard, I took Peter and West Lindsay to see the immigration minister only this morning. I mean, we are just gobsmacked by this because one hand, the government is saying that we want to give regeneration to the Gainsborough constituency. Indeed, I got £10 million from Michael Gove for that.
that another part of government, named the Home Office, is in danger of scuppering three hundred million pounds worth investment led by Peter. And as I said in the comments today, to, tomorrow it's the worst possible timing. Tomorrow is the eightieth anniversary of the founding of six one seven Dambuster Squadron. So I mean, it just defies logic that you should put at risk three hundred million pounds of in, in heritage, investment, heritage centre, offices, hotels, keeping the wrong way open, and put a migrant centre there. It doesn't make sense. No, I agree with you. It doesn't make sense to me. But, you know, of course, we have another 500 young men have crossed the channel over the course of the last couple of days. And when we get the next clear spell of weather, many, many more will come. Somewhere between 450 and 500 hotels are filled already. I mean, the government are getting a bit desperate for places to put people. So, Edward, you're a veteran of many political battles, some that you've won and some that you've lost. Let me ask you. Can Scampton be saved? Can it be saved for this commercial project? Can it be saved for our cultural heritage and so that future generations can come and see and learn the extraordinary things that happen there? I think that if the Home Office insists on putting in 1,500 migrants next to a village of 1,300 people, next to a nursery school, as Peter Hewitt told the minister this morning, it will almost certainly scupper the deal. I think the runway will be lost. Runways are very sensitive things in the modern world. It's two miles long. There's a problem of security. There's 100 buildings there. We had nuclear-armed Balkan bombers there. There'll be no security around these migrants. I think it'll be very difficult. For, it'll be impossible for any private sector investor, investor to come in while the Home Office yeah. is there. Now, they say they'll be in and out in two years. Do we believe them? As you yourself, Nigel, said, that the government is tearing the hair out. And by the way, I mean, I'm with you. I think they should have been much tougher from the beginning. We should have resorted to push back in the channel. We should have arrested people two years ago. They will not come. And this is the point behind the migration bill. Migrants will not come if they know that when they land on our shores, they will be arrested. They will stay arrested until they are deported. Nobody's going to pay £6,000 to a people smuggler to come over here. But I agree the government's got a crisis. I support the migration bill. And I understand that all the hotels are being full up and all the rest of it. Uh, we've offered again and again we'll try and find them another site in Lincolnshire. But you should not scupper £300 million yeah. worth of investment. No, I absolutely get the logic of all of that. I will have to see whether the bill works. We'll have to see what the role of the ECHR is. But even if it was to stop now, we have the problem of those tens of thousands that are here already. Finally, I want to ask that question again to you. Uh, if I can, Sir Edward, you fought many battles over the years. Can <laughs> yeah. this battle be won? I don't know. The Home well, Office I hope it told is. us today that they have not made uh, up their minds. And yet we hear that they have alerted Serco the police and the local health authority. So I can't honestly put my hand on my heart, Nigel, and say whether we are going to stop this. But I can tell you that I'm moving heaven and earth, every contact I've got with the Home Secretary, Robert Jenrick. I'm using every contact I've got with West Lindsay. I'm standing up virtually daily in Parliament as a local champion. The local people can ensure that we have done everything to try and convince the Home Office not to come in here. The problem is is that everybody is screaming at them that the hotels are full and you've got to put them in military bases. And I suppose the Home Office will say yeah. that there aren't that many military bases left, in, which they still own. But I say that may be a fair well, point, but this is the wrong military base. The home of the Red Arrows and the Dark Busters do not scupper £300 million worth of investment. Sir Edward, thank you very much for coming on and joining us fresh you, from Nigel. the Chamber of the House of Commons. In a moment, in a moment, we'll show you a short extract of an interview, an exclusive interview that Mark White, our Home Affairs editor, did in Rwanda yesterday with Suella Braverman. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it. Like 
like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Mondays to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you know Kate Moss? Moss? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. I campaigned in the largest democratic vote in our island story. I know this country has so much to be proud of. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. The wisdom of the nation is in its people. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. That's why I'm joining the People's Channel. Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. Mark White, GB News' Home Affairs and Security Editor, has been in Rwanda over the weekend. He had an exclusive sit-down talk with the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman. Critics have accused the Home Secretary of indulging in nothing more than a glorified photo op. And yes, of course, these are powerful images. But Suella Braverman's visit here is not just about the eye-catching symbolism. The UK government desperately needs the agreement with Rwanda to succeed. Without a third country willing to take relocated asylum seekers, the government's illegal migration bill is almost certain to stumble at the first hurdle. So a meeting with the Rwandan president, Paul Kagame, was on the agenda as the UK strengthens its partnership agreement. The Home Secretary certainly packed a lot into her two-day schedule, visiting new housing developments and other support services being geared up to accommodate thousands of asylum seekers who may end up here in the months ahead. The plans still have their critics, of course, TV presenter Gary Lineker, opposition politicians and others. But Suella Braverman told me no one should judge unless they've been here. Would you encourage them actually to come here and see for themselves what Rwanda has to offer those who would come here and settle? Absolutely. I think there has been far too much uh, prejudice, frankly, snobbery, uh, amongst the critics, who most of, uh, most of whom haven't even visited uh, Rwanda. This is my third visit to Rwanda. Uh, this is a welcoming country, it's a dynamic economy. So to all of those critics uh, who display uh, a gross prejudice against Rwanda, I, I tell them to visit first uh, and then judge. An important stop-off for Suella Braverman was this huge tech hub in the capital, Kigali. 
home to hundreds of startups and companies from around the world. Rwanda is home to a burgeoning tech sector. The Northern Kigali House in particular has over uh, 200 companies, startups that are stationed out of here, uh, also organizations that support startups, and uh, we have more than a thousand members. Now, 55% of these are from other African countries. The Kepler Academy, high in the hills over Kigali, another example, says the Home Secretary, of the many education services Rwanda can provide asylum seekers. This well-established, well-respected local university has already committed to ensuring up to 25% of the students enrolled here will be refugees. But like the many housing complexes around this capital city, they have absolutely no idea just how many people they'll eventually be asked to accommodate. For in truth, the Home Secretary doesn't even know how many asylum seekers may eventually have to be sent here. It could be many thousands, but Home Office officials are quietly hoping that just like the Australian initiative against the small boats, once they finally start relocating asylum seekers, the people smugglers' business model will be broken. It's a big gamble, and this country is a vital component. Well, I don't doubt for one moment the determination and sincerity of the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman. What I doubt is the role that the Strasbourg Court will play in this, and indeed our own judges as well, all will be revealed. But back to Lincolnshire, back to Scampton. Let me just show you some pictures of me arriving at Madame Buster's Inn earlier on today. Well, I'm here at the terrific Dan Busters Inn in Scampton. I've got to confess I have been here before. I'm here with Greg Algar, the governor. What's it all about? The pub? Yeah. Um, the pub is a, a, a homage to um, Bomber Command, but more particularly 617 and 133 air, air crew in particular. Come and show me more. Yeah. This is 133 air crew, 19 aircraft that are the Denbusters um, personnel. So 133 went and 53 were killed, I think, is that That's right? That's it. Yeah. The pub's favourite, most people's favourite, Lincoln City Football Club's favourite is Johnny Johnson. Johnny Johnson. Johnny Johnson. Who died? 101. December last year. Yep just didn't yeah. quite, because it's the 80th anniversary this week, isn't it? It is, this Thursday. Of the, of the formation yeah, yeah. of 617, yeah, yeah. so yeah, literally only just gone. The last surviving pilot was Les Munro, who yeah. came in 10 years ago and yeah. signed our wall for us just there. Brilliant, yeah. Um, we've got a family of uh, the air crew coming in this Thursday. Jeff Rice's daughter's coming to see us. Johnny's um, grandson is will open in the stained glass window that we've got uh, opening this Thursday, and his daughter's coming. Fantastic. It's a hell of a tribute. It really is. This is the honours board, is it? It is. Used to hang in uh, RAF Cranwell. They kindly uh, gave it to Danbusters in only two months ago. So this is the Victoria Cross, obviously, that... Gibson got. Took it for the squadron, really. Yeah. I mean, if you know the story, uh, that work that he did, on the, on the, particularly on the Mona Dam, is incredible. Going in uh, with second and third aircraft to take away the flak so that they could do their mine on target. Incredible. Yeah. What's interesting to me about this is that those that came back got, yeah. got awards. But it seems that those that didn't make it back... Yeah, no, didn't no, get no posthumous medals, no. Well, it's an amazing pub, this, and it's, it, 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 it is like a living museum. And I've got to tell you, if you're ever in this part of Lincolnshire, pop into the Dan Busters Inn. Oh, no, it really is a great pub. It's well worth a visit. And in a moment, Greg Algar, the boss, the man behind this amazing collection, will join me on Talking Pints. And we'll talk about history, we'll talk about heritage, and talk about his passion 
for the extraordinary things that happened here all those years ago. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the program sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, three till six. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. Three till six p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. GB News has its own late night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11 p.m. and repeated every morning at 5 a.m. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at seven o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panelists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from seven on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. It's time for Talking Pines here, live, in the Dam Busters Inn, with these commemorative pint glasses they've had made. And I'm, I'm wearing, indeed, the badge, because it is, of course, this week, the 80th anniversary of the foundation of 617 Squadron. And, indeed, I'm here with the Governor, Greg Algar. There's a window going to be open, this new stained glass window that we showed earlier. In the church. And you helped raise a bit of money for it. By the way, cheers. Cheers. Great pub. Thank you. Good to be back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, the new stained glass window down the church um, to go. It, they're twin windows. Yeah. There's one window that's uh, commemorating over 100, well, 100 years of Royal Air Force Scampton. Um, and that was such, such a success that they thought they'd do another one. Um, and it's 80 years this Thursday since yeah. the formation of 617 Squadron. That's going to be quite an event, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. going to be quite an event. It's... Um, this place, I mean, it's a living museum. It's, it's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, you've been here, what, 12 years? 14 in November. Okay. Having spent years in Covent yeah. Garden and in London running yeah. restaurants and yeah. pubs. And, and what was interesting in your story about you coming here and taking Madame Busters in and doing stuff with it is that, from what I read, you didn't fully understand what your own father had done in the Second World War until he came here, is that right? Well, if your dad's a bus driver, you don't exactly go shouting and screaming, my dad's a bus driver. My dad was in the Royal Air Force, and I, he came out when I was eight years old, 
and that's a job, it was just a job. The significance of Bomber Command and my father and my grandfather, uh, 111 raids between my father and my mum's dad is something that I'm very, very proud of. I mean, it's a huge number, because roughly, yep. Bomber Command lost 3% with each raid, didn't it? So after, sort of after 30 raids, you were given the chance to sort of get a, get a ground job? If you, if you did a tour, that was 30 raids. But the average Lancaster lasted eight raids, and they thought that was economic interest. They were, if, if a Lancaster did two raids, that was economically sound. And how many missions did your grandfather do? 86. So the odds against that were huge. And, 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 and 56,000. Yep men died yep. on those missions, and the Australian um, Air Force lost even more men doing the daylight raids. I mean, you must think to yourself, your father and grandfather were incredibly fortunate. Oh, my dad always said that Grandad was the hero. Um, and now I look at Dad's medals, which are modest, uh, wartime veterans' medals, yeah. and I'm so proud, and we so easily forget uh, all the way back to Churchill, that they wanted to forget Bomber Command. And I'm not here prepared to forget Bomber Command. This is Lincolnshire. We are Bomber County. Um, and it's everything that I can do to run possibly one of the most successful pubs in Lincolnshire whilst just pushing a little bit of uh, interest in that that is... Uh, RAF Scampton. Well, there's plenty of it. And yeah, and you're phenomenally busy, 400 mils over the weekend, you're brewing your own beer, doing yeah. all sorts of things. A very successful pub. You've got here the log books, of course. That this, the, these are you know, very, very collectible things. You've got these for both your father and your grandfather, yeah? Yeah, and, and the, the uniqueness of um, father and grandfather. Yeah. It's, uh, my dad signed up as a 16-year-old, couldn't be any younger. My grandfather signed up as a 35-year-old with an 8-year-old daughter and bless mum's nearly finished upstairs and she's only 87. Dad died last May, age 98. Yeah. So we're all at the very end of remembrance. I don't know the Crimean War, but I promise you I know a lot about yes. the Second World War and that's what we're here to represent. And you've got some medals here. These are your grandfather's Dad, medals. Granddad's medals, DFC and Bar. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a very, very good medal group indeed. Yeah. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. How do you feel? I mean, clearly the RAF leaving, I'm sure, was quite a blow. It had been trailed. It's happened. It's not going to be reversed. But how do you feel about the buildings up there, about the artefacts being Guy Gibson's artefacts? being Well, Guy boxes? Gibson's office was only reinstated 10 or 12 years ago. It was always Guy Gibson's office. Yeah but it went to rack and ruin, and someone had the forethought to put it all back, and uh, the Heritage Centre, whilst being an active base, was quite hard to get onto. So now, with everything um, gone from the MOD, we can clearly have a massive opportunity to build yeah. a Duxford of the North. Yeah, and then, the Duxford so, of the North, I like that. And then, a, yeah. and then all the other elements that your great guests just yeah, mentioned really early on that yeah. I didn't really know too much about. It just sounds like uh, a complete no starter to ever consider no. not, a not no. well, actioning I, this. I do wonder whether people in the home, some people in the home office, sort of just hate the country and hate our history. Yeah. It would be an act, a complete act of cultural desecration to do that to it, wouldn't it? To turn it into a migrant detention centre. Well, the, the the important thing for me is their heritage. And uh, we, we can all say, not in my backyard. Um, I'm not interested in that. Of course I'm interested in that. But what I'm interested in is the pre preservation mm. of my father joining 82 years ago. And I'm sitting here questioning the sanctity of just giving those veterans away just yeah. not caring about them because we've got something better to do or somebody else using an issue to, to overlook what I hold dear. 
No, absolutely. Now, I've got something special to show you. Okay. Never been seen before. One of those pilots who was lost was John Hoppy Hopgood. Yep. And we had a chat about I him earlier. I haven't seen this. No, 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 no. Well, no one actually has. That's, yeah. that, that's quite a famous picture yep. of him. Now, the story, the story of him yeah. and Madame's is astonishing, isn't yes. it? Yes. Is it about 20 to 30 minutes out from Madame? Yes. The plane gets hit. He's got a bad head injury. Yep. He's got one of the guys with him is sort of applying presses to try and yep. stop the bleeding. Yep. One of the gunners has been killed yep. outright already. And he turns around to the crew and says, well, we've come this far. Yeah, and in fact, I even think, having spoken with family members, that um, he kept something secret. He didn't tell the, the front gunner was dead. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not even sure that he knew. But nonetheless, you're bleeding, you're bleeding through blood, and John was never giving up. John was always going on. And John always had it in his mind that it was a suicide mission. So having that in your thought, and you still press on when you're bleeding. Yeah. And then as they, because yep. Gibson goes first to the dam, surprises them, yep. doesn't get that much yep. flat. Yep. Hopgood gets the lot. Yep. So they hit again very, very heavily. Then what happens? Uh, about Hopgood's yeah. aircraft. Hopgood's yeah. aircraft, they, yeah, they were hit 50 minutes short of the moment down. Yeah. He pressed on. Um, you need five crew members to coordinate to say, drop that mine. Mm. Um, they didn't quite get that right. Uh, there was absolute chaos in the aircraft. The bomb was dropped late. It uh, bounced over the dam, uh, interrupt, uh, smashed up the uh, power station below, which took out the rear part of the plane. John managed to get to 200 feet elevation, told people to get out. He successfully saved two people's lives. Yeah. Yeah, and of course died himself when the plane and crashed. It's an amazing him. story. What I've got here, I'm going to let you have a look at yeah. this, uh, Greg, after the show. Thank you. It's his last letter to his brother, where yeah. he describes how excited he is because yeah. he's coming to Buckingham Palace, yeah. where he's going to get awarded the DFC and bar, which yeah. he'd won earlier. Yeah. I've got the last letter here, my dearest mother, mm. that he wrote, and this, this is astonishing, I think. And the letter, is, the letter says 617 Squadron RAF Scampton, Lincoln. And it's Dear Mrs Hopgood, it is with much, it was with deepest regret that I have to inform you that the telegram you have received about your son, Flight Lieutenant J.B. Hopgood, was killed in action on the night of the 16th, 17th. And he goes on to say, with deepest sympathy from the, all the lads yeah. in the squadron, yours sincerely, Guy Gibson. Yeah, I, so it's a remarkable yeah. private collection, and here is his DFC and bar, which he himself went to collect at Buckingham Palace. It is a yeah. remarkable thing. Um, and I have to say, the one thing I do think about it all is those that, those that survived the raid and came back, many got decorated, yeah. none of them got yeah. posthumous medals, no. so there was no extra award, but it is a remarkable private collection and I thought you as an enthusiast yeah. for all of this would like to see it and I also thought perhaps it was worth reflecting that it's very easy to watch the Dan Busters film or watch many war films um, and to think how amazing everything is um, but actually perhaps it is just worth us reflecting on loss, the, the terrific loss of life, the terrific sacrifice that took place. I've got friends in Holland I've got friends in Germany. I've put people in Holland in touch with friends of the Mona Dam, the mayor of the Mona Dam. My Dutch friends are going to Germany to, to, um, on, on, the 80, on the 80th anniversary of the raid to say uh, we need to be friends and we need to remember these occasions. And we can't just throw all these occasions away. So that's happening because of the success of uh, aviation in this county yeah. and, and the diligent work that the International Bomber Command Centre do, for example, and a number of other, other establishments. We're just a little pub um, and we take ourselves very seriously. Well, Greg, I want to say a huge thank you. Thank you. For looking after yeah, me. I did yeah. come here a few years ago. I thought it was the right place to come back to. I was yeah, yeah. absolutely right. But I want to say again what I said at the start 
of this programme. It is really important, I think, for this local community to keep that runway going. It's been made clear by the local MP, the local council, and indeed by Scampton Holdings, that if you have 1,500 migrants there on that site, it is impossible for that to continue as an operational runway. There needs to be a proper, not just heritage site at RAF Scampton, but heritage trail all the way through this part of Lincolnshire. Yeah. There are some extraordinary things to go and see. Indeed, the church that I was at earlier with the stained glass window and so much else. Can Scampton be saved? Well, all I would say to this is that Scampton absolutely must be saved, not to do so. To turn it into the Home Office's plan would be actually an act of cultural absolute dereliction and devastation. Let's go and find out what the all-important weather is. Back with you tomorrow. Hello, I'm Alex Deacon and this is your latest weather update from the Met Office. Plenty of wet weather around through this week, but drier and brighter spells in between. Not a huge amount of brightness out there today, a lot of cloud around, but it is pretty mild because between these two weather systems, this is called a warm sector. So some quite warm air in here and well, we've seen a bit of brightness Temperatures have been jumping up into the mid, even high teens in a few places. But we do have wet weather from those weather fronts pushing across Scotland, in through Northern Ireland, and another spell of rain coming into Wales and the southwest. A few showers further east, but many places dry this evening till this rain band works its way to the east overnight. Behind that, there'll be a few breaks in the clouds, some clearer spells. But the mild air persists overnight, so temperatures staying at 9 or 10 Celsius in some towns and cities. As for tomorrow, well, overall, it's a, a similar kind of day, but should be a bit brighter, I suspect. Some early rain across eastern England, staying pretty damp across the Northern Isles for much of the uh, day. And then we'll see some showers for south of Scotland, northern England, spreading to the east. Could even see one or two heavy ones, maybe even a thunderstorm, most likely over the Pennines. Further south and west, though, not too many showers. Better chance tomorrow of seeing some sunshine, some blue sky. And the air is still mild, so temperatures will be uh, up into the teens once more. 15, 16 is possible. Cooler as the breeze starts to pick up and more rain pushes into Northern Ireland come the afternoon. That is a spell of wet and windy weather that swings across all areas during Tuesday night. Some brighter colours there in the west. There will be some heavier bursts of rain, at least for a time. This rain then around on Wednesday morning, clearing away from Scotland, or the lingering in Shetland, and clearing away from the southeast by the afternoon too. Many places then brightening up again through Wednesday with some spells of sunshine, but a few showers are likely to develop through the day. Quite a gusty wind on Wednesday, a blustery, boisterous kind of day, not quite as mild, but still temperatures 10 to 13 or 14 Celsius. Goodbye. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <gasps> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Co. You're uh, an inspiration to us all. Click that bit off. Well, you are. You, my, you, you, no. <laughs> my political ambitions are those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing. Go on. He's probably going to want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes to have one. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like Absolutely. on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubery, weekday evenings at 6 o'clock. 
I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, uh, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the People's Channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We 